you've noticed how when the winter snows blow in, the seemingly never-ending chorus of birdsong quiets, and all that's left are a few brave chickadees and cardinals. Where do the other birds go? Why do they leave? How do they know where they're going? My name is Katherine Grabenstein, and I'm a senior studying biology at Cornell University. Outside of class, I'm part of a research group at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology where I study bird behavior. Ornithology might sound like a scary word, but it just means the study of birds. I think birds are pretty amazing, which is why I want to talk to you about an incredible natural phenomenon that happens every single year all across North America, fall bird migration. Migration is the seasonal movement from one place to another. That means that birds in North America leave their home the same time every year to head to the same place they did the year before and then come back to North America several months later. They pay attention to a lot of the same signals that you and I do, such as changing temperatures, shortening days, and there's not as much food around as there used to be. So in preparation for their journey, birds spend weeks gorging themselves on food to fatten themselves up, sometimes doubling their weight. So the next time someone tells you to eat like a bird, tell them what it really means. Birds spend so much energy flying that they can actually lose 1% of their body weight per hour. That's like the average size man losing two pounds per hour just walking around. Because flying for long distances requires so much energy, it's crucial for birds' survival that they eat enough before they leave. They also can't leave too late or there might not be enough food along the way for them to make it to their destination. It's important for birds to have enough food, but it's not just important that they have enough energy for them to get there. It's also important that they spend the right amount of energy while flying. Something that surprised scientists when they first learned that birds migrated was how far they went. How could something that weighs less than an apple travel thousands of miles without dropping dead out of the sky? The answer is simple addition and subtraction. The average bird flies at about 30 miles per hour. If you throw in a favorable tailwind of about 10 miles per hour, suddenly that bird is soaring at 40 miles per hour. If that same bird encounters a headwind of 10 miles per hour, suddenly it's only going 20 miles per hour. Most songbirds wait for the passage of a strong cold front because cold fronts create strong north-south winds, which is the direction that the birds want to travel. Most birds will wait for these favorable wind conditions and then take off together as a large group. There are two types of birds, those that migrate during the day and those that fly at night. Most large birds, such as raptors, tend to fly during the day because they aren't threatened by predators. They are the predators. They find thermals, which are rising pockets of warm air, and glide on these thermals to get to their destination. The birds that migrate at night tend to be much smaller, like warblers or sparrows. Migrating is exhausting, and small birds would be easy pickings for predators. They fly at night under the cover of darkness to decrease their chances of being eaten along the way. Once birds know when to migrate, where do they actually go? Most birds tend to head for warmer weather in either Central or South America. In North America, they follow four major flyways. These flyways travel along major landmarks like coastlines, mountain ranges, or river valleys. Birds on the Atlantic flyway follow the east coast down to the tip of Florida. From there, they head to South America. Birds on the Mississippi Flyway follow the Mississippi River down to the Delta. From there, they take a shortcut across the Gulf of Mexico to head to South America. The Central Flyway runs down the middle of the United States. Birds on this flyway fly overland through Mexico and Central America. For the Pacific Flyway, birds use the Pacific Coast and Rocky Mountains to guide them southward to their destination. Using major landmarks like mountains and river valleys may seem easy, but how do birds find them when they're flying in the dark? The birds use the stars as a compass to point them south. With such a long distance to cover, there are plenty of things that can go wrong along the way. Being eaten is always a risk. After flying all day, small birds would be too exhausted to escape a predator if they were attacked. Even though birds wait for favorable winds, inclement weather is often unexpected. Imagine being a tiny warbler flying along when suddenly you encounter a raging hurricane. Strong storms can blow birds off course or even out to sea. And if birds manage to find shelter during the storms, they're often delayed for days, unable to fly in the rough winds. 
Humans also have a huge impact on migrating birds. In cities, it is estimated that nearly one billion birds each year die from flying into tall reflective buildings. Light pollution also poses a major threat to migrating birds. Lights confuse birds and they are unable to use their star compass as they move at night. But perhaps the greatest impact humans have on bird migration is through habitat destruction. Many birds take weeks or months to reach their destination. They stop at familiar locations to rest and refuel before continuing on. But what happens when a black-throated blue warbler is on its way to Cuba and in Virginia the forest that it usually stops at has been replaced with a brand new strip mall? This is exactly what faces migrating birds all over North America. Stopover sites they have used for thousands of years are being changed into shopping malls and housing developments. Because migratory birds rely on multiple habitats, it's important for both habitats to be protected. If they don't, those birds are in big trouble. Most migrating birds spend half of the year in North America and half of the year in South America. And it's important for both countries to work together in unison to protect the bird and its native habitat. If only one country works towards protecting the habitat, that effort is likely to fail because both habitats need to be conserved. But humans also have the power to help migrating birds by studying the routes they take and then helping to protect these areas. And a great part about studying bird migration is that anyone can be a bird migration scientist. All you have to do is go outside, see birds, and then note where you see them. In fact, scientists who study bird migration rely on people just like you to help them collect their data. Scientists then use this data to generate maps of bird movement across the United States. Birds are pretty incredible creatures capable of migrating thousands of miles. They are able to sense when the conditions are just right for them to start their long journey, navigate over thousands of miles to reach the exact location they intend to, and ultimately find their way back home again. So the next time you're outside, pay attention to the birds. Maybe they're fattening up for the long journey ahead of them, or they might have just flown several hundred miles to be in front of you at that very moment. Regardless, it's hard enough as it is migrating as a bird. Let's do everything that we can to help protect the routes that they take and also the places they call their home.